this thing. And the will of God was saying there's only one way. So his will was disciplined. And he says, not my will, but thine be done. And if you haven't trained yourself to, to have a will that is disciplined, you will never be able to save many people like Jesus did. The third thing is emotions. This word emotion is a strange word. The emotions have to be controlled. You, you, you actually cultivate your emotions by learning to control them. People throw tantrums and fits. <clears throat> I encourage you to learn how to control your emotions. Emotions are controlled by understanding. Take heed, Jesus said. And I want you to look at this in Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 12 real quick. This scripture you won't believe is in the Bible again. Oh, this is almost like you're still born. You've got to find this. It says in chapter 7 of Ecclesiastes, that's the book right after Proverbs, and the one just before Song of Solomon. It's in the Old Testament, not in the Concordance. All right. Now don't laugh. A lot of folks haven't been in the Bible as long as you have. I remember I used to look in the index, look for the number, the page. Yeah, I mean, I, I wasn't always able to do what I'm doing, all right? Chapter 7 of Ecclesiastes, verse 12, it says, Wisdom is a shelter as money is a shelter, but the advantage of knowledge is this, that wisdom preserves the life of its possessor. Isn't that powerful? That means you could have a lot of money and no sense. Let's put it this way, a lot of dollars and no sense. You could, you could have everything, but if you don't have the knowledge of God, or if you don't have the information required to properly use what you have, it says that that is not smart. The advantage of knowledge, it says. Everybody say knowledge has an advantage. My goodness, you, you really got to get this. Matthew 4, 24, write this down. It says, Jesus speaking, he says, Take heed what you hear. Your soul to me is the most important part of your makeup because your soul is the receiving center and is also the distribution center. Your soul receives from your senses and from your discernment. Now your senses are your sight, your hearing, your smelling, your tasting, and your feeling. That's your five senses. Your soul receives information through that. Then your spirit has senses and your spirit is, is a discerner. He brings information from the spirit world and gives it to your soul. So your soul gets information from two sides, from your body senses and from your spirit discernment, and you, your soul is in the middle. Now what I think we've really done is we have neglected the soul. So the soul has been picking up information that ain't good for the spirit. We've just been eating whatever was around us, like the environment. Let me give you some advice. Hosea 4, 6. Just turn there with me real quick. Now, I want to finish this section and we're going to pick this up next week. But Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 taught me something. And don't miss this. I was in Miami the other day and I was sharing with the people. And I discovered that the best way to hide something from a black man is to put it in a book. <laughs> I don't care how you disagree with that. That's the truth. A black man like John Gano, carnival, music, anything where you don't have to think. Especially music. Uh, by the way, the word muse, we get our word music from, literally means to stop thinking. Ah, which is what he wants to do. He don't want to use his mind So you can hide anything from you folks. Put it inside a book. And yet, look what God did. Put the whole thing in a book. <laughs> That's why a lot of dark-skinned people go into cults. Because they don't want to go into the book. Any error comes along and someone is talking it, they are convinced. 
Now look at Hosea 4, 6. And don't ever forget what I'm going to say today. Cultivation is a serious thing. If you are going to be successful in your life, you're going to learn to cultivate your potential. And God says in Hosea 4, 6, I read it. It says, be, my people are destroyed because of a lack of knowledge. The devil don't destroy my people. Demons don't destroy my people. The government don't destroy my people. The economy doesn't destroy my people. Social situation don't destroy my people. Drugs don't destroy my people. He says, only one thing destroys my people. Ignorance. Now why do you call people who don't know something ignorant? Write the word down, you'll see why. Now, this is amazing to me. The Bible says, my people perish because of a lack of knowledge. Now, don't think the lack of knowledge is the same as the unavailability of knowledge. Now, that's trouble. Because the next line gives it away. It says, because you have rejected knowledge. That means we have knowledge all around us. But we refuse to take advantage of it. Because you have rejected knowledge, you will be no priest before me. That means you can't stand before me intelligently, God says. We can't do business. What causes a man to perish and be destroyed? Ignorance. Lack of knowledge. That means that no matter how great your dream is, uh, if you don't have the information relative to your dream, forget it. Now watch God. Because you have rejected knowledge, the implication is it's there. I find it difficult for me to go before the Lord and say to the Lord, you know God, I really failed in that area because I really didn't know. Do you know that no one in this room I'm sorry to announce this, but nobody in this room, nor anybody watching this television program or listening to this tape, no one in this audience can ever say again, I didn't know. What you can say is I rejected the opportunity to learn. We've got bookstores, one right here in the ministry. We've got libraries all over the city. I mean, we've got tapes and videos and all kinds of avenues for information. What you don't know, they say, can kill you. But I plead to disagree with you. Because that's exactly what's killing you. According to the Word of God. My people are perishing because of what they don't know. So how awesome it is then for us, if we're going to cultivate our potential, is for us to begin to do what uh, Solomon said, we must go after wisdom like treasure. You know what that means? It doesn't mean wisdom is precious, you know. It means you got to dig for it. Ah. you got to go after the thing. Wisdom will show, show up and says, hi there. Osmosis, just lay down, I'll come in you. One thing with a book, you can't put it to your head and just get all the information. And just, it just doesn't work that way. The saddest part of the verse is the last part. It says, and because you have rejected knowledge, I must reject you, and I must also reject your children. Why? You teach your children what you know, and if you know nothing, that's what they're going to learn. Now, the, the depressing part of this is God says, not only did you reject knowledge, but he had to reject you. I never heard of God rejecting his people. Of course, that's what he says. He does. Which means even though you love the Lord and you're still his people and you're called by his name, God says we cannot do business. Why? You are totally ignorant of the situation. You come to me asking me for things you ain't supposed to ask for, and you don't want things you need. You see, you're totally ignorant. You, you don't know how I operate. You don't know.
know how you operate. You don't know how the devil operates.